Hey guys, what is up? It is Meg Pager here once again with another video on Arrow Season 6 and this is going to be my review for Episode 14 which is otherwise entitled, I think it's Collision Course? Yeah, anyway, who cares about the title? But of course, before we can continue on to the rest of the video, there will be spoilers and uh, some pretty big things happen in this episode. So if you've not watched the episode, be sure to go watch it before you continue on with the rest of this video. But if you have watched it and you are continuing on with this video, be sure to drop a like on it if you're going to enjoy the video. Let me know in the comment section down below what were your favorite parts of the episode. What didn't you like too much in this episode? Just all that, leave it in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. So Arrow's been on break for like two or three weeks. So the last thing that happened was that, you know, the big thing, I guess, is that Caden James was killed by Ricardo Diaz. And it was revealed that Ricardo Diaz basically had his hands in different pockets throughout uh, Star City, might I say. Uh, like he's in control with the new DA, I think he said the new police chief and different, you know, powerful people within the city, they're all on his side. So Oliver's got quite the task in front of him for the rest of this season. And we see a perfect example of this when we see the murder of Caden James being covered up by the new police chief. Uh, that was the new police chief, if you weren't sure. You see it pop up like twice in the episode. So just to clarify, that was the new police chief after um, the other guy, can't remember his name. Whatever, the other guy, he's dead now, who cares? After he died in the elevator, that random episode a couple of episodes ago. Um, so, yeah, it basically it's made out that he died in prison rather than that room that Oliver was in at the end of last episode and that we saw Caden James die in. So, big cover up there. I think Oliver will eventually find that out, maybe? Maybe, who knows, if they it will eventually find that out. Uh, but that's our first example of the cover up that's going on now and like the the power that Ricardo Diaz has in Cent uh, in Star City, might I say. Obviously in the previous episodes we had Caden James like ordering Oliver to give like 10 million dollars a day um, from Star City's uh, bank account if you want to call it to his offshore account and you know he's dead now so we need that money back but unfortunately someone's taken it. Hmm, who could it be? Oh, Black Siren, of course. Now throughout this episode, or throughout this video I might I say I'm going to refer to Black Siren as Laurel because it's just 20 times easier. So really, that's like a thing that plays out in the background this episode, that issue around Oliver trying to get that money and uh, whether he can do that. So it's like a, it's a reason as to why certain things are happening, but it's also not the reason at the same time, if that makes sense. Now, one thing I do have an issue with an arrow sometimes, not all the time, just sometimes, is that the T-spheres just seem like they can do anything. Like what they were doing in this episode just seemed a bit over top, like over the top to me. Like we never saw like uh, Curtis working on that stuff. It just happen like the holograms of Laurel being dragged and stuff so that's how like new team arrow finds out that Ro Laurel was rescued by someone that she just didn't get away she was rescued by someone she was dragged driven away so team arrow or new team arrow might I say is like well something is fishy on here or going something here is quite fishy might I say so those T spheres just seem a bit overpowered I think it's just more like when it's relevant to the plot they're overpowered but yeah one thing that was cool in this episode is that we had Zoom name dropped in this episode when um, Quentin was talking to Laurel, or Earth 2 Laurel, about the people that she was like working under, because that's true, I've mentioned that in like multiple videos, like Laurel, or Black Siren, was sort of like evil because she was under the command of certain people, so first off it was Zoom, which was in Earth 2, like we saw in The Flash in Season 2, then it was Adrian Chase last season, and then this season was Caden James, so it's almost like she's like not fully bad. She's bad because she has to be because she, it's almost like she owes a debt to certain people. I think with Zoom, it was more, okay, if I'm not good, if I'm not bad, might I say, and I'm more heroic, Zoom's going to kill me. Uh, I think that's more what it was there. And then Adrian Chase rescued her from the pipeline, owed a debt to him. And then Caden James got her off the island, owed a debt to him. So Laurel seems pretty loyal, but that loyalty leads to her being seen as evil and hopefully we see that changed in the episodes to come. Now the old Team Arrow, or original Team Arrow, whatever you want to call it, and new Team Arrow, that initial conflict in uh, the new Team Arrow base was just lame. Like it was really lame, but I think the whole point of it was just so uh, Curtis, oh not Curtis, sorry, um, so Rene put the audio chip on Oliver. Was that, the whole, was that like the whole purpose of that conflict being really lame? It just came off that way to me, but um, it didn't go on for too long, thank God. But when Curtis was going through the fact that um, like Felicity had hacked them, did he name drop Cobalt Blue? He said Blue, but the word before it sounded like Cobalt. He might have said Colt or something, but like just in the back of my head, I said Cobalt Blue? Is that what he said? He might not have said it, but if anyone else heard that, let me know in the comment section down below. If people don't know, Cobalt Blue is like a Flash villain. Um, so that could be a little Easter egg there if he did say Cobalt Blue, but 
I don't know the similarities between why they would say color blue, so it might not have been said, I might have just been hearing things anyway. Now Laurel is essentially aiming to get out of the country, which makes sense, she has that money as well, so it makes sense as to why she would want to get out of the country, just start fresh, because she is seen as a bit of a, you know, bit of a bit of a villain, bit of a criminal, so it makes sense that she would want to get out. It is interesting that Quinton's like going to go with her, but then he would leave her when she was like established, if you want to call it that. Um, but you can just tell that Laurel is like, it's all an act. Like this evil thing and like not caring about Quentin, it's all an act. And hopefully they don't keep going with that just because it can just get boring if they keep going with it. Like at this point, I think I'm fine if that if this was the final episode in which it's all an act and she's pretending to be um, like not interested in Quentin because you can tell she has feelings for Quentin. She like, we've heard a backstory about her losing her father when she was much younger than uh, what Laurel was when she died. Like she was like, what? Was it under 10? Was it around the age of 10? Like, give or take two years. Um, so she was really young. So obviously she wants to connect with Quinton, but she's putting on an all out, like this big act in order to seem as if she's not interested. So hopefully that dies off, you know, either this episode or maybe the next episode. But um, yeah, you can just tell it's all an act. But then we got into the, uh, I guess, like the thing that was really in the trailer for this episode. And that was the big fight between old Team Arrow and new Team Arrow, or Arrow Civil War, as we've been uh, calling it, I guess, in... The cool internet space that's called Twitter, I guess. Overall, I thought this fight was actually pretty decent. I was actually pretty impressed with it. It was really dark though. That was the thing that I was like, oh, okay, well this, it's really, really dark. You can hardly see what's happening. Like, honestly, I didn't even know Renee had been that messed up because it was so dark. You couldn't really see what was going on. The lightest part in the actual um, fight was, I guess, was Curtis's T-spheres lighting up and stuff with the big T. That was really the, the brightest thing that happened in this uh, the fight. It was really dark, which is a bit annoying. But overall, I thought the fight was pretty interesting. But this all leads into Dinah confronting Laurel. And I've said it before, like I've said in like the past, past couple of episodes, like new team arrow is getting really irritating. But Dinah Drake in this episode was possibly the most annoying character I've ever dealt with. I couldn't stand her. I, every single time she was in a scene, I was like, this is going to be annoying. And it's not the actress's fault. I think Julia, Juliana, Juliana Hakabi, I think that's how you pronounce it is awesome. I think she's cool. I think Dinah back, you know, when she wasn't in this like, oh, Vince died stage was cool. But this character is really intolerable. Like, I don't think you can like this character. Even if you love Juliana, Juliana Hakavi, I don't think you could like this character at this stage. So unlikable. I don't know if she's written this way to be this unlikable. And I know someone died, but you've never seen a character do this. It's just over the top, especially when Vince had been gone for so long. They didn't really know each other that long beforehand. It just seems over the top to me and uh, I don't know, just really annoying. And uh, thank God Curtis was there. Curtis was all over the place in this episode, I think. Um, but at least he had like some sort of intellect thought, you know what, this is stupid. Why are we even doing this? So thank God Curtis was there for that stage. But yeah, as I said, like I didn't even see uh, like Renee get that messed up in that fight, but um, he almost died, I guess. And that basically causes a massive rift. Well, the rift to get even bigger as like Curtis and Dinah don't want anything to do with Felicity. It's not going to be any sort of communication, no teaming up in the future, which, uh, hmm, that's going to be interesting. But next episode is the Roy Harper episode. So I don't even know if a uh, new team is going to even be involved in that episode, like one bit. Um, we might see like a couple of scenes with them together, maybe with Renee in hospital, maybe. I don't know, but I'm more excited for Ray, uh, not Ray, Roy, uh, Stuff new team are just give me Roy Harper and let's go back to what season, you know, one to three in the team there. I'd be more happy with that than anything else. But as I was saying before about the SCPD sort of like, uh, you know, covering up the murder of Caden James, you do see them complying to another dude. Was that like the new DA, I guess maybe, or some sort of high up in the mayor's office? I don't know if we'd met him before or if they name drop it there, but I'm going to guess he's the DA or something like that. But uh, the SCPD is going to comply and give information away so that person who we saw at the end could uh, help take down Oliver Queen. So Oliver's got enough on his plate, now he's got this. Like, you've got to feel bad for the guy, don't you, sometimes. But, uh, you know, he's the Green Arrow, he's mayor, he's mayor, then he makes enemies, so I guess he brings it upon himself. But, hashtag pray for Oliver. But the big cliffhanger, and I wonder if we're going to get anything of it next week. I don't think we will. I think we might have to wait a, a week or two to um, see this play out further. But we see Black Siren or, you know, Earth 2 Laurel emerge from running away from that fight with the Arrow Civil War to some dude there. I don't even know what he was doing there. Just, he was just looking at something, I guess. Um, and she walks out and she says, 
um, that she's Laurel, Laurel Lance. She's adopting the Earth One Laurel, obviously. But can someone clarify me? I uh, mean, uh, clarify to me in the comments about this. Did she say she'd been like captured for two years? I think she said two years, but I didn't hear what she said before that. So, did she say she'd been like kidnapped or captured or? had like been knocked out or like held up somewhere for two years. Is that what she said? Because if that's the case, she's obviously going to adopt the Earth One Laurel Lance persona. And um, wow, like I, I was saying like it wouldn't surprise me if she did that, but I wasn't expecting it this soon to be completely honest. So I'm interested as hell to see what happens in the next couple of episodes with that because I want to see how the public adopts that, whether, like whether the public believes that, I guess, because you know, I don't know, necessarily know if Star City would be that familiar with doppelgangers. Like, even Central City isn't um, with all of that. So, you'd think they would have to believe it. And, um, wow. Like, I, I'm just interested as hell to see where that goes, to be completely honest. But overall, I thought this was a pretty decent episode of Arrow. As I said, the only part I didn't really like was Dinah Drake, annoying as hell. Um, just new Team Arrow in general. But Dinah is like, like the captain saying, we're annoying. That's basically new team arrow in general um basically anything to do with new team arrow was annoying in this episode and a negative so yeah favorite parts were probably the black siren stuff and just seeing that uh, that uh, that story progress further and i'm also interested with like uh, ricardo diaz having all those uh little uh troops if you want to call them spread out through uh, throughout star city's higher ups in like the mayor's office and police staff and all of that so i'm interested to see where that goes as well but thanks for watching guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on the video to show your support. Let me know in the comments section down below what was your favorite part of the episode. Was it, uh, you know, the Laurel Lance stuff, I guess. The Ricardo Diaz stuff, just let me know in the comments section down below, as well as anything you didn't like. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later guys, goodbye.